Hello! So, I've been away for the last few days uh, visiting Prague for a long weekend in the Czech Republic, or Czechia as it's now known. So I thought we might recreate the flight I did, or that I, I was a passenger on. Um, so we're going to fly from Heathrow over to Prague. We're going to do a night flight because it's live weather and it's, um, it's late in the evening while I'm recording this. So I thought it might just be interesting to retrace my steps. And to make it that bit more authentic, or less authentic as the case may be, and you'll understand why in a moment, we are using the Airbus A319 in the simulator. Now unfortunately the only A319 available is from Latin VFR. And unfortunately it's not as high fidelity or as accurate as either the fly-by-wire Airbus or the Phoenix or the new Inibuilds Airbus. So we're going just to take it on face value. It's, I think it's quite expensive given that it is so inferior to the fly-by-wire A320. But it's an A319 so it fulfills the objective of using the same aircraft that was used for the route that I was a passenger on. OK, so let's have a little look on Little Lab Map. So we're parked at Terminal 3 at Heathrow Airport. And we're going to get the aircraft up and running, then taxi round to runway 09 right. You can see the, the flight plan here. So we're going to fly out on a standard instrument departure out to the Detling VOR, then out across um, Belgium and then Germany into Czechia. And we're going to descend into Vakla Havel Airport. So there we, here in the in Little Nav Map it's called a uh, Rosine, but it's uh, Vakla Havel is its common name that it's known as who was the, the late leader of the Czech Republic um, following their uprising in the late 80s, was it? The student uprising that brought down the, the communist regime. Anyway, we're not going to get into politics. There's the route from London Heathrow over to um, Prague in the Czech Republic, or Czechia. So let's go and see if we can get this aircraft up and running. So full disclosure, I have had a little look at the aeroplanes, obviously, to go and configure the throttles and things like that. So we are going to have some challenges along the way. So inside the cockpit, let's have a look around. So you can see it's actually quite nicely modelled, but an awful lot of it is completely inop inoperative or is wired up wrong. So <laughs> you'll see what I mean as soon as we start firing things up. So let's go and turn the batteries on and then we'll go and put the dome lights to dim so we can see what we're doing and then we do have external power available so we'll go and turn that on. We'll go and turn the ADIRS system to NAV and so that will be busy lining itself up. So you'll notice straight away we haven't got a crew supply for example. We can go and put the nav logo lights to one though, to let people know on the ground that we're in the aircraft. We can put the strobes to auto. We can go and put the seatbelt signs. Oh, actually, we won't do the seatbelt signs just yet. We'll do it just before pushback. So no smoking goes to auto. We can't alter the emergency exit light switch, which is a bit odd. You know, even if it, it doesn't really do anything usually in the simulators, but normally you'd be moving it from off to auto, uh, sorry, off to armed. Um, okay, so we're going to go and fire up the APU. So there's another quirk in the aeroplane that's absolutely wrong. You have to go and put the fuel pumps on before you can start the APU. That is not correct at all. So APU goes on and then press the start. Or oh, it's not correct as far as I'm aware. I've never seen another Airbus where you had to have the fuel pumps on. As far as I was aware, the APU has its own fuel pump. Anyway, so now we've done that, the ECAM screen is lit up and is showing us that. Which is good. So as soon as the APU is up and running we'll be able to get on our way. So I have put the route into Simbrief. Let's just go and quickly show you that in the uh, the web page for Simbrief. So you can see there's the basic route and you've got the routing here. So EGLL over to um, Vekla Havel. Uh, doing the DET 1J standard instrument departure and the LOMC 8T star. Okay, so let's go and see how we do this. I think it's in here. Here we go, Simbri flight plan. So it's a bit odd and clunky, the interface, even though there's no ID in there. It says it's found my ID from earlier when I programmed it into Triotape. So I should be able to fetch the OFP. 
and there it is so that's all good and I can send that to the CDU or the MCDU so this is again quite clunky I've already tried this once and it threw me for quite some time I thought it had failed so even though we've not gone into this yet if we go to init now okay it's got some data that's good <laughs> better than last time. It's got the cost in Nexus 5. Let's just go and double check that against this. So we've got a cost index of... I can never find the data on these things. Uh, where is it? Cruise profile. There we go. Cost index 5. That's correct. Okay. 35,000 feet. Um, it's got flight level 350. That's correct. Okay. That's actually looking better than I thought it was going to. Wind doesn't work. Uh, IRS in it. That seems to work. Okay, so then go sideways on the init page. It's got the weights from the SimBrief integration. That's all good. Okay, so we should be able to then go into the legs page and have a look down. And can we see? That looks like it's got the whole route, but it helps. It hasn't got the Sydney Star yet, so we'll just come back up to the top. Select the departure airport and put in nine right for the runway. And the, was it Detling 1J? Let's just double check that. Yes, it was. So there's the Detling 1J. I apologise for my voice, by the way. I've got a horrific cold. I think I picked it up on the, the way home on the aeroplane. So there's the SID put in place. Then we can select the, the um, arrival airport. Go into arrival details, ILS 06, and the Lomk 8T star, wasn't it? So that puts the basics in, and insert that. Then come back to the flight page. Let's just have a quick scan through for discontinuities. I don't think there should be any. Okay, it's all looking good. Just press flight plan to come straight back to the top. Go to performance. So another thing I've noticed, this is quite a funny one. We haven't set the flaps yet, so the aircraft shouldn't be able to calculate V-speeds, <laughs> except it can. I don't quite know what flap setting it thinks I'm going to use, because I haven't done it yet. But we'll go for flaps 1 anyway. That one just abused me enormously, I don't know why. It's like, I wonder what else it's going to throw at me. Um, okay, so we're pretty much uh, based on you know what does work and what doesn't work. You can see there's hardly anything in terms of checklist items appearing on the ECAM screen, but... Let's go and have a look. Um, uh, yeah, things like that you'd expect to be working like the predictive wind shear. None of that actually operates. And there's lots of blank panels where you'd normally have like weather radar configuration panels and none of that works either. <laughs> um, okay. So the, the system... Oh, the inertial navigation system has just woken up as we were looking at it. I was just about to say it hasn't woken up yet and it woke up in front of our eyes. Um, the screens all look bright enough, so that's all looking good. I'm just having a check round, seeing what is where to make sure things are in the correct places. So let's get on with pushback. Uh, so what do we need to do in terms of lighting? We'll put the seatbelt signs on before we do the pushback. We'll let, let's sit back a little bit before we do this so we can actually see things. Strobes are on auto. Um, a beacon light needs to... Well, we'll do pushback first, then put the beacon light on just shortly before engines start. So for pushback, we're going to press Shift and P. I'm not going to turn taxi light on yet, because that will go and blind the driver. Can we put the tail light on just while we're waiting for that? Does it have a tail light switch? We've got nav and logo. There's the wing lights for checking for ice. Let's have a look and see what does get... Oh, that, yeah, that lights the tail up for us. Okay, we'll leave on to then. Show everybody we're British Airways. So we're just getting ready with the parking brake to release it when the truck engages. It will do its usual trick in flight simulator where the truck slams into the aeroplane before it snaps into place. There it goes. Release the parking brake. Go and put the APU bleed on. Come down, turn the ignition on, start engine number two. Should see N2 climbing, and it is. Exhaust gas temperature should start to increase very shortly. It's an automated sequence on the Airbus, you don't really have to do much. 
you see the turbofan speeds coming up they, <laughs> interestingly that still hasn't is it going to come in it should come in at about 20 25 percent that should start climbing there it goes we can also put the flaps to one while we're at it so you can see the flap indications moving there how are we doing in terms of positioning Got lots of time. So we're going to be turning right, I think, and out round there in a moment. So we'll continue pushing back for the moment. It's not a problem. So that engine started. Let's start the other one. Everything for push back. Okay, we're happy to let go of the truck. <laughs> I love how it just unbolts and we carry on freewheeling backwards. I think we've accidentally triggered the next truck. Have we or not? Oh, actually, we might have got away with it. Okay. So, now he's pulled away, we can put our taxi lights on. We can sit up in the cockpit. And just check what we've got on. Oh, the beacon light should have been on, shouldn't it, as soon as we started engines. A little bit out of sequence there, but I'm doing this without a script today, so... I'm going to be making a few mistakes here and there. Now, has that truck come racing across? No, it hasn't. We got away with it. Okay, so we don't need the APU anymore. APU bleed can come off. And we are good to taxi. So I'm going to go and adjust the barometric pressure as well on the altimeters while I think of it. And we'll also go, and before we start taxiing, so we don't try and multitask too much, I'm going to set this to cruise altitude and press the top half of it to push it towards the aircraft to, to tell it the aeroplane we want it to do it. So then go off the parking brake. <coughs> Let's go and put the head tracking on. find our way out to the runway. So let's just have a little look at the the map. So if I go back to Heathrow, you can see we're just coming up here to taxiway. So then we want to go, I guess we could continue on down to Delta, couldn't we? So rather than taking this first left, we'll continue on down. Heathrow always looks pretty at night, doesn't it? It's because it's big, it's got so many lights. This is just the stock version of Heathrow that comes with the simulator, by the way. It's not any sort of special version. I have got the the Orbex version of um, Vakla Havel in Prague when we get there, so that should be interesting. Okay. we're following down Delta so then when we get to the end of Delta we'll just do a small dog leg let's get back onto the taxiway while we're not looking let's confirm those flaps have travelled yes they are in position 1 that's good oh we do get the checklist then that pops up so one of the things we'll need to do I noticed the actual crew doing this on the flight we were on with testing the um, the hydraulics for the um, the ground spoilers on the way out to the runway, they tested them several times actually. Although I think what it might have been, I was wondering about it, watching them. I think once it's armed, 
if you use the tow brakes it causes the spoilers to flip up so every time they touch the tow brakes to moderate their taxi speed I think the spoilers were flipping up only, mo only momentarily but I saw it happening and thought oh I think I know what's going on there it's quite an interesting one so we only need a short takeoff run this is only a light aeroplane compared to the bigger ones of a lump there in the scenery in this version of the simulator so let's go and put the strobes and the landing lights to on go and line up Okay, so what haven't we thought of? People are always having a go at me about doing the auto braking. Um, I guess we could put it on medium while we're on the runway, ready for takeoff, and that will, should, I think it disengages on its own actually. So yeah, it want, although it's saying here it wants auto braking on max. What does it, oh it has simulated that, okay, that's okay then. So signs are on cabin ready, spoilers armed, flaps have to take off, that's all done. Landing lights are on. And I think we can put the yeah the nose light can go for takeoff instead of taxi, which is obviously a bit brighter. Strobes are on. I think using the runway turn-off lights is optional according to the carrier and the you know, their standard operating procedures. Everything else looks good. Okay, toga on the throttles. the centre line. You can see it's an immediate right turn immediately as soon as we turn, take off. So I need to be aware of that. 120 knots, 140 and rotate. It's a bit pitchy so gear up. that we're on the climb detent, it looks like we are. And flaps can come up just. The aeroplane should fly itself now, so should we have a look outside to see what's going on? Let's keep throat. Here's our Airbus A319. Flying the standard instrument departure, and we're on our way now to Prague in Czechia to um, Vekla Heaven. Very good. So, increasing speed to 250 knots, so that'll be following the restrictions in the flight plan, which I should have put back on the screen. But actually, saying that, look, it's not the most tremendously accurate thing ever, it hasn't got the speeds. Okay, so if we increase the range on the display, but we haven't put the transponder on yet, we're going to do that with, I don't even know if it works in this aircraft, to be honest. oh it's already on, look, so it was, oh, mm, power is on, but the, uh, it's, it's non-functional, okay, so it, the ignition should have come off, <laughs> it won't actually harm it, but it will um, put wear and tear on it, so the ground spoiler don't need to be armed anymore, Coming up to 5,000 feet towards 6,000, which is transition altitude, so we'll be getting ready to go over to standard barometric pressure any moment. 58, 5,900 feet, and standard barometric pressure, and now, as so you can see, it's changed quite a lot. 7,000 feet, we're just coming up through. So we're preparing to go and turn the landing lights off as we come through 10,000 feet. If we look out, we can see London out of the window. 
So we do that with the head tracking it'll look a bit easier right now. So sit up. If I remember how to do it, I'll put a link in the notes of the video to the real video I recorded landing back into Heathrow. So I recorded, it was a night landing, so you'll see this backwards essentially. <laughs> it was fascinating to look down on the ground and essentially see exactly the same scene stretched out into the distance. Of course I posted it online and some friends said, wow, look at the graphics. So we've just come up through 10,000 feet, so landing lights can come off. The nose light should have been off already, really. Can put the nav lights back to one. Strobe lights to auto. And we could even go as far as turning off the dome lights now, if I can get it to do it. Can we turn this off? Okay, so we're following a managed climb straight up to cruise altitude, managed speed mode, managed altitude, which means it's following the, the flight plan, which you can see is stretched out in front of us. I will come back in a little while when we are approaching our destination. So I'm going to pause here and I'll come back at the top of descent probably. So I'll see you very soon. Let's have a little look outside just to see our progress. It was just frozen. Why does it always do that when you least want it to? So we can say goodbye to London behind us. You can see the Thames looks snaking around Doctrine's area down there. And the major parts of the city further on. Anyway. I'll pause there and we'll see you at the top of the descent later on. Hello, we're back in the aircraft. So as you can see, if we look at the screen, the top of descent is marked just at the Comib waypoint, which is about 40 miles out, or just approaching. So we are going to start thinking about what we're going to do next. So let's have a look at the flight plan and see where we are. So we're zooming across the top of... Um, now we, we haven't actually crossed into Czechia yet. We are still over Germany. So we've just passed over the top of Frankfurt. So let's go and remove the jet airways off the map just to keep this nice and clean and tidy. So you can see yeah, the top of descent is being marked at the same place as the A320. Um, performance data. So it makes me wonder how accurate this might be because that looks remarkably similar. You'd imagine with a smaller aeroplane it might be able to descend a little bit later but we'll see. Okay so we want to descend down to a given altitude typically so let's go and have a look on here. So these are the minimums for the airways along the way. So it's saying yeah, no lower than 7,500 feet this early, which is fine. Our real... So we don't really have any restrictions to speak of. Let's have a look at Navigraph just to check that. So there are no obvious altitude restrictions on the way in. You know, nothing... There's no, like, blue markers. There's some here, about 5,000 feet. It's looking okay, so let's just have a look at, just to get familiar with this before we get there, so let's go and double check the ILS for 06011.15, so if we go and look inside the aeroplane, go and do the rather name. Now, 11115 is already programmed for ILS 06, that's all looking good. And the course is 62 degrees, so we can double check that visually with the map in the map. So we've got 60 degrees here, so close enough. 
11115. That may actually be that little nav map's wrong. Let's have a look on here. So this is saying 60 as well. So it's a bit interesting that it says 62. I wonder if we can change that on its own. No, we can't. Okay, not a major problem. So let's have a look. Oh, we're getting fairly close. So normally you would set your descent. So we're going to go for 10,000 feet to begin with, because that's the point we're going to turn the lights on. So set 10,000. We're about 20 miles away from descent. So if we zoom this in a little bit now, you can see that Comib waypoint coming up with the top of descent marker directly on top of it. So we're going to use Manage Descent. So I've set 10,000. Notice I haven't told the aeroplane how to do that yet. So the vertical speed hasn't changed at all. We're still on Manage Speed Mode, Manage Heading Mode. And we will be going, as soon as we press this in, it will start descending when it comes through Top of Descent. So we'll just do it shortly before. Give it some time to react, because it will probably want to wind the throttles back. So it's running quite happily, 71% on the N1 for each engine, so it's chugging along about 265 knots. I noticed on the climb out it was quite sluggish climbing out, but that's because we're only on a cost index of 5, so this is like the cheapest flight ever. It's been very clear, I'll have to say, all the way. So I've looked in on it a few times also had a hot chocolate while I've been <laughs> waiting for the flight. Okay. So I'll put the strobes back to on. Just so they're not left on auto. And is there anything else we need to deal with? A lot of this is inoperable on this version. Oh, it does have the weather radar here, but the switches don't actually do it. Mm, I say they don't do anything. They're probably completely non-functional as far as the display is concerned, which is a bit of a shame, but you can't have everything. Okay, let's go and put the dome lights back on to dim, so we can see what we're doing around the cockpit. And I'm going to let the aeroplane start coming down to 10,000 feet. So we've selected 10,000. You'll see the vertical speed. It may not go just yet, it may wait until we come through the top of descent. So let's see what happens. So I've commanded 10,000. Is it going to do it? Still thinks it's in cruise. That here it goes. Look, it's just triggered it. I wonder where the trigger point is on that little aeroplane. So it's coming down to ten thousand feet. So it's pulling the engines back to stop the acceleration. It's it's late with doing so. And we're beginning our descent. So if we need to along the way, we can always use the spoilers to expedite the, um, the descent. Let's go and have a little look on the map and see where we are in terms of the route. So we're just coming in over here. So we're chugging along. 
gliding down basically from 35,000 feet down to lower altitude. So now we are descending. Let's go and put the seatbelt signs back on. I turned them off when we got to cruise altitude, so seatbelts go back on. Tell the passengers to go and get back in their seats. Or at least to put their seatbelts on if they are sitting down. Shall we look outside, see how the airplane's doing? fine isn't it? So when we get to um, Prague Airport I may well grab the Xbox controller and take you for a wander around the airport because I've not seen it before so I think it might be fun to go and have a look around. We might even find my wife's coat hanging on the back of a chair in um, the coffee shop in the terminal because she left it there. <laughs> so yeah, um, that would be hilarious wouldn't it if the developers had put a coat on the back of a chair in the terminal. <laughs> Okay, just coming down to 30,000 feet and descending. We're coming down about 2,000 feet a minute. Pretty quick, really. So if we extend the range, will it show us a predicted point at which we get to 10,000? I don't think it does. It, it should, but I don't think it does in this version. Or it might be the zoom level that's causing it not to draw it. Twenty one hundred feet a minute at the moment it is descending at. Engines are almost idling, thirty eight percent. Something we will we will need to look up, sorry tired and having trouble speaking anyway because of this cold. Something we will need to look up is the information on the airport. So open the airport, so Havel or Rosine, get a weather. We're looking for 1005 hectopascals. So let's go and make sure that this is on, I think on the right is hectopascals, left is inches, so we'll confirm that in a moment. So when we come back down to the transition altitude, let's find out what the transition altitude should be. So if we go and look at the ILS, that typically has it on, there we go, 5,000 feet. So once we get to 5,000 feet, we will calibrate the altimeters to the local air pressure at the arrival airport. In fact we could do that now within the system. So 1005 and the wind is 150 at 5. We should be able to do it in here. So if we go to performance, go next page, Appro uh, sorry, approach, yes, so 1005. Temperature is 2 degrees. Now, within, I think, I think it's four degrees as the cutoff, you need to be aware and make sure that the ice protection is ready. Uh, wind, uh, yeah, dew point's minus three, look. So it's gonna be pretty cold on the way in. So wind was 150 at five. There we go. So we've got decision height over here, which you can either do via barometric pressure or via uh, radio, although it doesn't seem to be labelled as such in here. Normally you get barrow and radio written down. So I'm not going to bother filling them in because I don't think this airplane simulates anything accurately anyway. I 
I think this aeroplane borrows a lot of the fly-by-wire code. They may have had to do like a bit of a clean room conversion of it though, to avoid getting into too much trouble. Well, although I guess because the um, the fly-by-wire A320 is open source, although Jeep, uh, sorry, open sourced um, licenses typically say if you use you know the project, then you must offer yours as well as part of the deal of open source development. You, know, you can't just take advantage of the work of others. You have to then contribute towards the same project yourself. So anything you make from it as a derivative has to be offered in the same way. So yeah, it looks like we don't get a, a green banana, which is a shame. Down to 20,000 feet now and continuing to drop. So as we cross through 10,000 we'll turn the landing lights on, hopefully. We'll keep an eye on the aeroplane during approach, I've never used the A319 before, so I don't know how accurately the systems are going to work, so I'll be on a hair trigger to disengage the autopilot and take over on the way in. Which will be fun because I've not flown this aircraft by hand yet, other than rotating it off the runway. can't be that difficult. It's an aeroplane. <laughs> Famous last words there. Should we have another look outside while we're waiting? And where's the city we've just passed over then? Should we have a look on the map? Uh, Beirut. Hmm. Anywhere else along the way. We're actually travelling over a fairly clear part of the scenery, aren't we? Not really flying over any big cities or towns along the way. Well, you can see that looking in front of us there's tiny, there's small towns and villages, but nothing big. Interesting route. Now, what, what is this thinking it's doing? That is, certainly isn't what this is showing. This is showing straight in approach. So I may have to take over. Let's just check the waypoints. So we're going long key PR707 Barracks. I think it might just be its rendering is messed up to be honest. So there may be a chance we go to managed heading mode. When we get a bit closer. If we look at the approach chart for the airport, it gives you the profiles here. So eight miles out once it's at four thousand feet. Twenty four hundred and sixty feet at five point six. Oh, so no, four, sorry. <laughs> then two and a half at uh, 2,000 feet. That's interesting. 3.05 degrees, three, zero, three degrees ILS. Hmm. 
this has got <laughs> the most hilarious rendering of what's going on here. So we're just coming up towards 10,000 feet. So I'm going to start helping the aeroplane to make sure we come down at a good rate. So I've just extended the spoilers to get us down to 250 knots as we reach 10,000 so we can come through it quickly and easily. So we're looking for 240 knots. So we're just helping the aeroplane achieve that quickly. Okay, so landing lights on. So it's reached 10,000 feet, let's continue straight on down into 5,000 feet now. Whoa, look at it, drop the nose. It doesn't do anything smoothly in this version of the Airbus, does it? Like I said, I don't think the programming is quite as accurate as some of the others. I think when we get to PR707, we'll be switching over. So looking at the map, 707 is where we make the turn in towards the approach. So it's obviously got this wacky idea about this curving path, which is obviously wrong. So shortly before we get there, we may go to heading mode and then follow 60 degrees all the way in. And at that point, we should be able to flick over to landing system mode and start using the navigation radios to navigate. So we're going to save the aeroplane from itself. So remember 5,000 feet is the um, uh, transition altitude. See this is interesting, look, it's saying 11,000, <laughs> 1,190 above, that's fine, we're going to be well above that. But then it's saying 4,000 feet above. So remember, these are... It's, it's very strange. So... We want to be 4,000 feet at um, I'm just looking here to see what this has got on the numbers here Barrocks 4,060 degrees and then obviously you're looking for the the way in so at 2,500. What's going on with this? So we're at 5,000 feet now. Which is 2,500 feet over the ground. That makes a lot of sense. It doesn't make much sense compared to the rest of the route, but... So we'll just hold this at 5,000 for the moment. I don't want to drop it to 4,000. So as we approach PR 0, uh, 707, we'll go to managed heading mode in 10 to 60 degrees, because we don't trust what this is doing. It looks like it's wrong very badly wrong. We could probably reprogram it. It's got a Kiva. Yeah, it's wrong. Look. So let's go and remove it. See if we can clear this out while we're on route. Actually, we don't want to do that. We want to remove a Kiva. <laughs> do the right thing. A Kiva. 
and then move this up slightly. Move auto mode. No, we want to clear out. Interesting, look, it's saying destination is Lomki, so we're not going to do that, we're going to leave it alone. It's got to a right mess. Oh, it's cleared itself. <laughs> this is interesting, isn't it? Oh, no, and now it's lost its mind again. So, yeah, we'll just go to heading mode. It'll be the easier way, easiest way to do it. So, we should be able to see the airport out there fairly soon. It's only, was it 40 miles out? We're a bit low, it doesn't matter. It's interesting that it's saying 4,000 feet here, which would be skimming the fields. Okay, so let's go to heading mode, which is lined up on the direction we're going. So we'll spin this to 60 when we approach PR707. Let's put our viewpoint in a good place in the cockpit, so we've got orientation correct. So we're 5,000 feet, remember, that's the transition altitude. So we push this back in, we want 100 five, wasn't it? Hey, okay, we're trundling along. Should we go and put the tail lights back on? Advertise who we are. Travelling sales board for nearby villages and towns. Okay, let's have a look. So when we cross over the top of PR707, we will dial in 60 degrees on the heading. Remember, we're ignoring the track now because it appears to be wrong. Do we get independent systems? No, we don't. It's a shame. We could have had map on one side and landing system on the other, but this airplane doesn't support doing that, so we can't. I wonder if I should go to manage speed mode as well. I guess we'll try it. We'll, we can always deal with... We've got quite a long run in. So it's not like we can't deal with fixing anything along the way. Should be fine. Let's just check the volume levels. Yes, you can still hear me over the engines, which is always good. I've had a few uh, microphone problems just recently, so I'm becoming a little bit paranoid <laughs> about making sure it's working correctly. So we're just approaching PR707, so we'll go and command the left turn to 60 degrees very soon. Just waiting for us to cross over PR707 first. Start commanding that 60 degree course. 
heading, I should say. So let's. Tracking on. See everything starting to line up. And if we were to look on landing system now, have we got anything yet? Not yet. We're a bit far out, so the ILS is not showing up. So let's go back to arc mode for the moment. You wouldn't expect to be able to see anything just yet, to be honest. So obviously we descended far too early. It doesn't matter. we have. Hurrah. So we'll go and cut across 10 degrees to bring us back on track. Whoa. See the runway. So that was the aeroplane deciding that... I'm not sure what quite happened there, whether the weather suddenly updated. Okay, so if we go to approach mode now, let the aeroplane straighten itself out and it will maintain the same altitude until it needs to start descending because it will capture the glide slope on the way in. I'm surprised it hasn't started decelerating yet. Glide slope is now approaching. We should be able to switch on both. Oh no, we can only use one autopilot on this version of the Airbus. I wonder if it's even got flare mode then. So we, that looks like I'm going to be flying this by hand. Okay, so let's go and do this rather than mess around trying to second guess it. Okay. Losing a little bit of speed. So we're watching the localizer, watching the glide slope. And we'll go and put the gear down. Spoilers to slow us down a bit more. It doesn't really doesn't want to slow down. This might be a bit of a bucking bronco ride in, you know. to get a feel for the aeroplane and it's very very twitchy 
So obviously you can see we've gone a little bit high, so we'll just lose that altitude. If I centre our view up into the correct place. So it obviously has no flight model to speak of that's anything like an Airbus, and if I even touch the throttles I seem to accelerate like a dragster. So 1% of throttle is the same as 10% by the look of it, which is going to be fun. So we'll let the current speed bleed off. Let's move this, we sit up a little bit so we get a nice view outside of the scenery. Well, they're saying that it's dark. Okay, we're full flaps now. Slightly off to the left. Tiny bit high. I think I'm going to have to blip the throttle down again because we have li little or no control over it and that's entirely the aeroplane's fault to be honest No, Pappy's looking good Have I lucked into giving it just about the right amount of throttle? About half a percent seems to be enough for it to to maintain the right sort of speed. A little bit high. Back onto the glide slope, which is good. Four hundred. Three hundred. Two hundred. I'm going to coax it. Suddenly the ILS has disappeared, but we can see the runway. 30, 20, retard. Yeah, it suddenly lost lift look at 120 knots. It came in like a bag of spanners, basically. <laughs> Let's see what the reverses look like. They work. Okay. So we'll go for the next high-speed exit and we'll taxi in towards the terminals. So this is Vakla Havel. Okay, so wind the flaps in now. Landing lights off, taxi lights on. just go straight over to a terminal and have a look. So again this is the Orbex uh, marketed copy of um, Vakla Havel. I only saw it at night. No, actually, no, I guess we did see it in the daytime on the way in. So, but we only saw it briefly so it's difficult to say if it's accurate. I guess once we get to the terminal I'll be able to tell you. So 
Let's just come in on this nearest gate. Okay, parking brake on. So we should we get external power is available so we could pretend we're going to plug that straight in rather than go to the APU and then we should be able to just switch the engines off obviously taxing light needs to come off as well so that goes to off the nav lights can go to one the beacon light can come off we've already retracted the strobe lights can go to off Okay, and seatbelt signs can come off. A lot of the rest of it isn't operative properly, so the pumps can go to off. The ADIA system can go to off. Now, I wonder if the um, ATC will allow us to use ground services. Uh, tune ground request jet bridge jetway connection Resume ground speedbird 319er could you please connect the jetway to the aircraft speedbird 319er the jetway is going to be connected there we go so should we say how accurately it, it does it so it's lowering it this is very accurate to the real ones by the way I've got photographs in the jetway Very good. Oh, there's a bit of a gap. <laughs> That's a shame. Right, so if we go and go and use the drone camera, I'm just going to get the Xbox controller. I think it'll be f fascinating to have a little look. Let's put this outside while, we're, while I'm plugging it in. I think it'll be fascinating to go and have a look around at um, Vecla Havel Airport. So keep default on the controller I've just plugged in. Get rid of that thing now. So if we press the um, insert key, which gives us the drone camera, and then we go to the drone camera controls, and we turn the drone speed down to two. And let's go and have a look around. So can we actually follow the jet bridge in? So if we pretend we are disembarking from the aircraft, we'll have to walk through a few walls here and there, I imagine, but... Oh, it looks like the terminal isn't done inside then. No. Or well, at least this bit isn't. Now, have they saved frame rate by doing that everywhere? Let's have a little look around. Yeah, they haven't got the interiors. But they have got the the jet bridges looking exactly like the real things. What about the other side of the airport? Oh, looks like they've got some lounges over here that are modelled. Or the controls, I guess. Various offices. No, that's all just textures. Oh, it's a bit of a shame, really. Is it the same everywhere? It's really nicely done, though. And it does save on frame rate not doing the interiors, to be honest. It does sometimes drive me mad when you approach a really detailed airport and the frame rate absolutely craters as a result. So you have got the control tower up here. Again, they've used textures rather than building any interiors. So on the way in, this looks very familiar. It's very cool, isn't it? 
It's always fascinating to see how the lighting is done. Oh, I think it is anyway. <laughs> see how they've approached doing it. Right, so there you go. Vakla Havel Airport. If I go and um, turn the time now Make the sun come up and you get to see it in the daytime. There we go, it has got the proper name on it, look. Thank Love Havel. That's obviously Prague in Czech. Okay, so hopefully you've enjoyed that today. That was a quick flight in the A319, so I can't recommend the 319, but this rendition of Prague Airport does look very, very good. So yeah, you can see the markings are fantastic on the ground. Very, very nicely done. Right, I'm going to leave it there. I'll leave my little aeroplane parked up there on the edge of the jetway. Wait for my passengers to disembark. And I'll see you all again soon. Okay. Take care.